Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of Etiquette Books, Etiquette the Least You Need to Know, and Afternoon Tea Etiquette. If you would like to order my books, please email me with the subject line book order at infojamilamusaiva.com. I'll link it down below as well in the description box. If you are new to my channel, here I talk about etiquette, soft skills, self-development. If you're interested in all of that, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you are a returning viewer, I am delighted to see you here. Welcome back to my channel. Before I start this video, I wanted to make an announcement that I will be co-hosting the very first international one-week intensive program with British Protocol Academy. I will be co-teaching together with Eric Banu, who is the principal of the school, and Laura, who is a reputable etiquette instructor in the UK. The three of us will be conducting a one-week intensive etiquette workshop primarily based on practice. It will take place in St. James Hotel, London from October 3 to October 8. To get the full information about how to apply and the agenda, please follow the link down below in the description box. In the light of the current events, in particular the passing away of the UK's longest serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, I decided to look at some of her life episodes or encounters with people, politicians, and really understand how her good manners, her, her etiquette, her sense of humor has helped her and the guests uh, save the situation. Uh, let's look at particular episodes that I have selected from other videos and look at them and analyze what perhaps went wrong and how she was able to save the moment. So let's take a look at this very first episode, the encounter between Justin Trudeau and Queen Elizabeth II at Commonwealth meeting in Malta in 2015. Canada's Justin Trudeau reminded her that he was the country's 12th Prime Minister to serve during her reign. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister of Canada, for making me feel so old. <laughs> So here Justin Trudeau welcomes Her Majesty and says that within his welcoming speech highlights that he's a 12th Prime Minister that has served under her reign. When she comes to return the speech, she says, oh, thank you so much for making me feel so old. It's a very funny remark. It made everyone laugh. She incorporated her sense of humor, but with that sense of humor, she highlighted the fact that she didn't really like that he pointed out that he's the 12th prime minister that has served under her reign. Though I understand that his intentions were very pure and he wanted to say, you know, that she has served on the throne for such a long time or that he's honored to be the 12th one, whatever his intention were, I'm, I'm assuming they were pure, but it came off as highlighting the fact that she is quite a long serving monarch. And that is something we have to be very mindful and careful about when we try to um, imply about someone's age. I understand that in this modern world uh, we are coming to accept our age and love our age and embrace our age which is the right mentality but there are still people of older generation that prefer not to be uh, mentioned about their age and in general I think age, uh, politics, religion, sexual orientation are things you would want to stay away from pointing out uh, unless someone feels confident about sharing with you. So if you want to be on a safer side and not to uh, offend anyone, try to stay away from implying uh, all these sensitive issues. In this episode, we hear the tribute of Theresa May uh, to the Queen and she shares a very interesting observation about the Queen as a host. Let's take a look at it and we'll talk. She would take an interest in what books were put in your room and she didn't always expect to be the centre of attention. She was quite happy sometimes to sit playing her form of patience while others were mingling around her, chatting to each other. This is a very interesting observation, I think, of a queen as a human being, because uh, other people don't really have, never really had the chance to interact with her or be hosted by her somewhere. Uh, so the recent May is sharing a very intimate story about how uh, the queen was such a considerate hostess and that she'd make sure that the guests that arrive at Balmoral, um, that their rooms would be filled with the books of their interest and that she always tried to make the guest the center of attention rather than herself. I think this goes beyond just the queen and the setting of 
uh, of you know her majesty but it's really applicable to anyone who wants to be a good considerate host um, may, be it in your home or uh, be it at a restaurant where you have invited the guests it's about being considerate about what other people are eating being considerate about what kind of setting that your guests might feel comfortable about so hostess being a hostess means you're considerate about your guests and being a good guest is um, being as polite and as accepting of the things that your hostess has provided you with and and grateful for that uh, so it goes both ways, but I think for the host it's especially important to take into account uh, the interests, the likes and dislikes, uh, and a little bit of research about your guests, who they are, where they come from, uh, what are some restrictions they might have in their food, or what are their interests in general. That will serve you a long way if you do your research beforehand. Moving on with Theresa May's speech, let's listen to this small anecdotal situation between her and the queen and then let's talk about it in more details put it on a plate and was transferring it to the table the cheese fell on the floor <laughs> i had a split second decision to make <laughs> i picked up the cheese put it on the plate and put it on the table <laughs> And I turned round to see that my every move <laughs> had been watched very carefully by Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> I looked at her, she looked at me, <laughs> and she just smiled. <laughs> so this is a very funny situation that I think reveals that no matter how important you are in your political career, in your life, um, whatever rank you hold, you were all after all humans and anything can happen to anyone and in this case Theresa May uh, I'm assuming was nervous around the queen so she takes this plate and carries it with the cheese on it and the cheese falls on, on the ground and she says I have a split second to make the decision do I take the cheese back or do I leave it on the ground and she decides to take the cheese put it on a plate and put it on the table while she's doing all of this queen is actually looking at her and watching every single action that she's taken and her reaction was just a very genuine smile i think in this situation we see theresa may as a guest nervous and not sure what to do with the fallen cheese as an etiquette instructor i would say to leave the cheese on the ground and make it look like she never actually saw it fall to the ground uh, or just discreetly um, take the cheese and, and ask for, for a replacement if she's the one who's actually picking the things from the kitchen. The queen, on the other hand, as a hostess and as having seen all this um, all this scenario play out, she's actually keeping her composure, keeping her emotions in and just giving Theresa May a genuine smile. She's not scolding her or she's not frowning upon her or um, you know making this face showing that she's actually disappointed in what happened she's really able to control her emotions and she's really able to be graceful and gracious and understanding that this situations can happen to people and they might get lost and not know what to do i think this situation uh, is a great example to understand that as a host um, all you have to do is ignore the bad manners or not pay attention to those. Uh, someone spilling things, someone dropping things, uh, someone not eating uh, in a correct manner. All you could do, the best you could do is actually not pay attention to that. And if that happens, act like you didn't see it. And for the guests is actually to learn to have good table manners and to learn how to behave in this kind of situations so you don't have to encounter them. The next episode is actually a very surprising one for me. I never knew about this situation until I watched some videos before doing my research for this video. Let's take a look at it and you'll know what I'm talking about. In true Elizabethan fashion, she appeared wholly unamused during a 2014 visit to the Game of Thrones set in Northern Ireland. She gave the throne serious side-eye and politely turned down the invitation to have a seat as the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. So here Her Majesty is visiting the set of Game of Thrones in 2014 in Northern Ireland when they were shooting the beloved Game of Thrones. Uh, she's invited um, by the director uh, to take a seat on the throne, the imaginary throne of Seven Kingdoms. 
and she politely declines, saying it looks uncomfortable. Interestingly, her reasoning for refusing to take a seat on the throne of the imaginary seven kingdoms is not because perhaps she didn't want to do so, but according to the royal protocol, the queen is not allowed to sit on any throne apart from her own of any foreign nation, and that includes the imaginary nations as well. Even if this is for the film, she cannot do so. So I think in this case, having been instructed about this protocol, the director or the actors having known about this fact uh, would have avoided the awkwardness of the situation where they offered her to take a seat and she refused to do so. But she did it in a very graceful and polite way with just a simple smile and stating that the throne just doesn't look comfortable for her. This episode teaches us a very important etiquette lesson, which is whenever you refuse something, apart from saying no, include a reasoning but behind this. So your excuse for why you're not coming or excuse for why you're not taking a seat. The excuse doesn't have to be a real one, an honest one. It doesn't have to go into a whole explanation about how you feel. Just a short statement will suffice to make the other person who's offering you that feel comfortable that you had your reason for saying no. So in this case, the queen could have just said no, or instead she said, no, that doesn't look comfortable to me. So putting everyone at ease that she had a reasoning behind it. For the next time, whenever you're invited to come to a party or have another glass of drink, apart from just saying no, include a reason and just a, a smile. And that will make you a graceful and gracious guest. And today's final episode for review is a very interesting encounter between Michelle Obama and Her Majesty the Queen. Let's take a look at this episode and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. She put her arm around the Queen like they'd known each other for years. The Queen seemed a little startled at the surprise gesture, but put her arm around the First Lady in return. In this episode, we see that Michelle Obama is going for a very loving, caring, I would say, but rather inappropriate according to the royal protocol, touch on the back with the queen. She hugs her from the back, which is something that is not allowed according to the royal protocol. No one is allowed to initiate a physical contact with the queen unless she initiates it first. And the closest you would get is a handshake. Uh, you would not hold her from the back or touch her elbow or touch her hand. So this is not according to the protocol of the royal family. But I'm assuming Michelle was not instructed on this or she was um, being herself around the queen and she really wanted to give her this little daughterly hug, which you see in the episode that the queen is surprised. You see that split second of a surprise uh, when she hugs her from the back and then the queen returns the gesture and she does a little hug on Michelle's back as well. I think this episode teaches a very important etiquette lesson to be learned is that though we know that in a certain setting we're following a certain set of rules according to a protocol or the etiquette um, of a given society or the setting we're in, we as human beings can adjust to situations in order to save our face and to save of that who has perhaps crossed that line. Having good manners doesn't mean that you have to go around pointing to people's poor manners. It will not make you stand out or show to others that you're, you have better manners than they do. In fact, the opposite is true. The more well-mannered you are, the less attention you give to those that don't have those manners. In fact, I actually get a lot of messages to my, to my email as well as um, to my Instagram asking about how do you deal with people that are not well-mannered at the table where you have good manners and they don't? How do you deal with people when you know um, you're, they don't know how to behave in public and you do? And I always respond that in any kind of a situation like that, when you're surrounded with people that don't have good manners, all you can do is not to pay attention to them. Now waste your energy, time, or attention to looking at them. You, the less attention you give to them, uh, the better off emotionally you're going to feel. And also, we are only responsible for ourselves. We can only take so much in. So our desire to become better mannered is really just for our own sake. It's not so much for other people. So whatever you're learning about good manners and etiquette will serve you. You don't have to worry about other people. If queen can overlook poor manners, I'm sure so can we. 
Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do let me know in the comment section below what are some video suggestions that you have for me. I love reading your feedback. I love reading your comments. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.